back when I was But there. it was only when I was only hard alcohol. I cannot. I, it was That's a different. Yeah. Do. Mm-hmm. We were animals. Right. We were and then when we first started <laughs> drinking beer, I was there for a minute. <laughs> but then I was like, no. Right when you figured out how bad then, it went yeah. to your stomach. And then yeah. we started smoking stogies. Then mm. we started drinking the hard alcohol. Yeah. Not Time when... times and hard alcohol. And then and Mike's New up. Year's party. Yep. And then, and then that yeah. was a wrap. Mm-hmm. That was the last time. <sighs> that was all I needed. But anyway. Oh, welcome. Mm-hmm. The NFL Week 3 picks, no loss, <laughs> and upsets. And yeah, I'm just going to start it from there. Right? <laughs> I, I, it was a full-on conversation. I thought it was a decent conversation starter. And uh, yeah, you know, we're just sitting here kind of reminiscing about the old days because we're kind of back to doing this uh, picks podcast how we used to. You know, we got kind of lucky the first two weeks. We were able to do it kind of at a decent hour. Doing it at about seven o'clock, but old Colge, who's in the building, had work tonight until midnight. Colge, how you doing? Um, I feel terrific, actually. Uh, feeling good about my picks. Feeling good about life. You know, feeling good about everything. I still can't believe you're in first place, but you picked all those games the way you needed to to make up those points. Yeah, that's absolutely. exactly what you needed to do. I told you I was coming out with a bang. And I'm gonna finish with a bang. You know, you're banging you know, something. You know my strategy for most races or any competition. What? <laughs> I start off fast. In the middle, I go fast, and I finish fast. That's what I'm gonna do this year. Holy fuck! So you're just not slowing down. No slowing <laughs> down, dude. I'm not gonna get less than a double digit at least by week eight. You know, week eight might be my week where I get nine. Throwing out the bold predictions already. Yeah. I love it, dude. Absolutely. 80 plus points. You got you got me ready to run through a brick wall. Somebody who's got me wanting to ram my head into a brick wall <laughs> is fucking Barnage. <laughs> Yee. Barnage, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah? You're yeah. making me want to kill myself right now. Yeah. That's Sam Darnold jersey on. You can't see it right now, but he is wearing a New York Jets. Sam Darnold jersey, and Sam Darnold is fucking tearing up right now. Twelve dollars. <laughs> I think that's how much my Justin Blackman jersey was. I can't fucking Easy. believe it. Easy purchase. And he's killing it. It's, and guess what? Yeah, he beat Jameis Winston. Yep. That hurt me. Mm. That, that kind of hurt me because I hate I both of it. them. But I hate Sam Darnold way worse. Well, it was bad for me because I hate Sam Darnold and I love Jameis Winston. And watching that whole game go down, it was... I am I might have to admit he's an average quarterback. What? I mean, I, I never thought I'd have to say those words, but we made that bet. Mm-hmm. And I think we've caught you guys up to speed with this bet before. But I made a bet with Barnage saying if the Panthers won... Six games, I will say Sam Darnold is an average quarterback. Because these are the arguments the crew has. We don't have, you know, arguments about which player is shitty, which player is good. We have arguments over, you know, if the player is shitty or average. You know, we ain't talking about great. And that's what we were heated about over the offseason. We've all been in on the argument. <clears throat> I've been in on the argument, too. Yeah, and Larry's been in on the argument. It's been about a 2-2 split between Larry and Barn. And me and Colge. Mm-hmm. Colge, are, are you, you thinking that Sam Darnold's looking average right now? Well, are you obviously know? last game he looked average. But I don't think he's an average quarterback. Anyone could have a really good week or an average week. I think Where? he had nothing to use with the Jets. <clears throat> and the only time he was ever good was with Robbie Anderson. And he was 11-5. and five. They actually were a playoff team. And, you know, I do think he's he's actually really good. I think Christian McCaffrey is a help to him. I think they got a good receiver. Group. This team is just solid. And they finally got a good defense put together. They're young. And he's doing really good. Their schedule's lining out really well for the him. See, and that's where I get irritated, right? So, like, there's, there's a level 
of respect here with these teams that are 2-0, and I think. I'm not impressed with the Broncos being 2-0. and No. I'm so impressed. But I am so <laughs> impressed with the Raiders being 2-0. and Yeah. I'm, Absolutely. <clears throat> they, I, did two, they won two games that I didn't think they would win. I mean, but one of them was in the home stadium, but still, you know, I don't expect those games to be won by the Raiders. Can we can we talk about another quarterback that I think we are all like always say he's an average quarterback, but can we start saying maybe he's good? I think Derek Carr is a good quarterback. Derek Vehicle's on a new level this he's year. He's leading the league in passing. I, I think we, he is. <laughs> throughout the crew, in. he's a very liked quarterback. Yeah. Very. Liked. I, I don't think anybody like. I think dislikes him. I, I think I've always wanted him to turn the corner as That's a quarterback. What I'm like, I just want him to get good. Like I just it's been that long mm-hmm. and it's like with the with the badness of David Carr, his brother that already came in, and it's kinda like you have to wear that as the family name. And I I just love him. I think he's starting to get to where he needs to go. I think it's exciting because there's so many quarterbacks that I like watching. And one of them, for example, is your quarterback, Larry. Yeah. Kyler Murray, probably going to go down as one of the games of the year, at least for the first half mm-hmm. of the season against the Minnesota Vikings. And I also want to touch on the commentary on that team. Gus Johnson and Aqib Tlaib are an elite commentary duo, and they're going to be on the Jags and Cardinals game this week, so I'm excited about that. Yeah. But the Vikings fucking choked in that one. They totally did, and I think, honestly, I love Kyler. I love what he does for a team. He's got a great escapability, but... <laughs> He is. He also does way too much, and that gets us in trouble. But when he does so much, it's so good. Sometimes. I know. Sometimes it's so good, but then oh. sometimes it's a pick six to Nick Vigil <laughs> to start the game because he's staring down a guy who just got a seventy-yard touchdown. You know, you can't do those type of things, and it kind of hurt us. And that's why it was so close. We lucked out on the field goal, and my my coach had a timeout, so he could have took a timeout like most. Most coaches would to ice somebody. Didn't do it. So it's just a luck of the draw thing. Mm. I'm surprised. Yeah. So we're going to go back to this this week. We're going to go over a team that impressed us this week and a team that let us down. So we're going to do one of each this time. So that time it kind of just flies by a little faster. For a team that impressed me this week, we'll go with the Baltimore Ravens. I must say they had everything working against them. The media is not working for them. And in a division that has a Cleveland Browns, Pittsburgh Steelers that are still playing at a high level, you need a significant win like that against the Kansas City Chiefs. A team that disappointed me, fucking Saints. Jameis, you're really going to take this L to help Barnage in my Sam Darnold debate. Can't have that. Barnett, who do you got? I think the team that impressed me the most was the Panthers. They uh, shut the Saints down. I love it. And uh, I think the team that let me down the most was the Chiefs. I can't. They, they're they supposed to be a top-tier team. And they kept messing. They... they they screwed up against the Ravens, and you can't screw up if you're wanting to be in the Super Bowl every year. So that gives me a little bit of hope for the Browns in playoffs if they can keep screwing up. Larry, who do you got? So I was also impressed by that Panthers, but I'm not going with them. I just wanted to say 82 yards and two picks for Jameis Winston. No. Sounds like he's about to even out for the year. Just needs three more picks. Um but the team that I was most impressed with was Washington. Taylor Heineke stepping oh, in yeah. Thursday night against a division rival team. Short week. That was such a he good did game. it. He dominated, went in there, and my boy Ricky Seals Jones got a game winning oh, touchdown to, Ricky to Jones. flip the deal. <laughs> so that was amazing. It was good to watch, and I love that. A team that disappointed me, I'd say the Bengals. Uh, oh. uh, Burrow just fell apart. I mean, he threw a pick six to Roquan, and then right after that, he threw a pick to a corner. In a winnable game, too. and And then he tried to bring it back, but it's too late at that point. I was completely disappointed by Burrow's effort in that game. Bulge, what do you got? Can I do one? My 
both of them in the same game. Yeah. Dude. I'm I'm most impressed by the Raiders. <laughs> the Raiders, their vehicle, he completed passes to it was either eight or nine or ten different receivers. He dotted us up. No doubt about it. He looked elite in that game and it was a fun game to watch, obviously. The Steelers disappointed me the most. Najee Harris is so lukewarm. Yeah, lukewarm. Hasn't been getting going like most people thought he would. And Big Ben just kind of looking like a below average Big Ben. He has his weeks. I like. I think. And our defense needs to carry us a little bit more. <laughs> I think. I think it sucks that I asked you about Tyson Alwalu in mm-hmm. the last week, and then yeah, and he got hurted. Yeah. And, and T J Watt got. A little bit hurt. He should be fine for this week, though. Well, that's good. I think the most impressive thing for and me... Ben, actually, shit. Yeah, he is questionable. He's questionable. <laughs> Dwayne Haskins, baby! Pec a pec injury. Oh, dude, I totally forgot about dude, that. Dude, Dwayne... I if it's in his throwing arm. Uh, yeah, it big, is. That's a it's, big problem. And that's... Last, when he had surgery, it was his right elbow when he had surgery. Yeah. Dude, when you play the Bengals, this is Dwayne Haskins' revenge tour, baby. <laughs> He's probably not even the second string quarterback, is he? No. He's yeah, it's like it's Mason. Yeah, it's like yeah, he probably. He's got not. a little bit <laughs> uh, traffic to but get. But who knows? Maybe game time decision. Yeah, maybe it's a QB <laughs> competition. <laughs> this week, who knows? But I want to talk about the Raiders for a second because I think the most impressive thing is Derek Carr has a connection with every single one of his receivers, and Colt, you know, talked about it at the beginning. Mm. He connected to eight different receivers. I mean, Con- and like it's not like these guys are even like elite level good. Like, well, yeah, but I Hunter can, Renfro, like that's what you I'm saying. Tore us up. I, yeah. can, I can name off a few of them and just like like Hunter Renfro, Henry Ruggs, Brian Edwards. Yeah, which are like such such lackluster, lackluster names. names. Yeah, they yeah. are, but it's it's enough to get the job done. And Darren Waller, he's just a mm-hmm. he is a top ten, top five we, tight we end. Dub- double covered him all game, and he still got catches and yards. Yeah, man. he's an animal. And I just it's yeah, just tough. John Gruden coaches that offense, so really good. he always sees you know eight to ten receivers, different receivers, so it's not just his first team. And for how much time, or how many offensive linemen turn over for that team, for them to just be rallying it off, they did a good job. I mean, mm-hmm. they only spent one draft pick on linemen, and they traded, like, everybody, even an all-pro center. So it's like, that's crazy. They're just doing good. I think mostly the receivers, I'm just kind of, you know, lackluster names. I just... It's it's almost like Tom Brady in New England esque, you know, just yeah. thinking that what yeah. Bill Belichick does with them. Yeah, and I mean John Gruden, kind of a similar coach. He just go. needs to get maybe a little bit more time for the defense. Like yeah. really, the offense is there. That's the offense that you can run with. Mm-hmm. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for your favorite time of the week, my favorite time of the week, and your mom's favorite time of the week. Points review. I'm going to have Colch start off this week. Because you had such a... Because I'm in first, in first after week one. Yeah. That's the way it should go, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Whoever's in first. Yeah, because oh you got to see how they battle back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's gonna go, yeah, it's going to go by it placement. Be, so yeah. Barn is going to... All yeah. right. So last week, sadly, I got my upset wrong. And I got my lock wrong. But... I did very well. I got another 10-pointer. Holy fuck, with your lock and upset wrong, mm-hmm. huh? Because upset's no points yeah. lost now. Thank goodness. But, yeah, so I'm sitting at 20 points. 20 points. 20 Ex- schmackaroos. Extending the lead in week two. Barnage, you making up some ground? Oh, I, I am making up some ground <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Well, I got my lock and my upset right. <laughs> and I got 13 points. In week one, I had seven. So now I'm at 20. He tiled it up. Tied it up. Barnage with a great 13-point week. Holy I think, fuck. I think, excluding last season, that might be the best week ever. Yeah, that was... Wait, crazy. did you get every single... Or no, I only missed, I think, like... One or two? 
I missed. He, he, he One, tore two, it up <laughs> when he's a four, four. Missed four. You should put some money down on Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck. 13 points. He ties Colge. And I was one point down from Barn last <laughs> week. There's no. <laughs> and, you know, by average standards, I had a pretty decent week, you know, before Barnage had to completely steal the thunder. Average is just not good. Enough. Yeah, and, 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 no true words have ever been said. I got eight points. I got my lock, but not my upset. So that brings my total to 14. Now, we had a historic high this week. Last week, we had a historic low for Larry. Now, Larry, did you hit a historic high to even make up some ground? Well, the funny thing is, I actually did hit a historic high. I got one more point higher than Barnage. I got 14 points this week. 14 (laughs) points? Yeah, I hit my upset with the Panthers, right? And I hit my lock right. My crazy lock of the Titans yeah. over the Seahawks. Yeah, you did it. Uh... I hit it. And the only three games I missed this week were the, Bron- the J- Jaguars the over the Broncos, the Bengals over the Bears, and the Chiefs over the Ravens. It's the only three games I missed the whole week. And so now, after only getting three points in week one, I am at 17 points. My oh my Jesus! Slap yo mama! <laughs> Damn, dude! I think like, and even just week week two, that's probably the biggest leaderboard shift we've, Absolutely. Had, we've ever had in the picks. So to recap, we got Colgan Barn tied in first place with twenty. Barn had thirteen points. Colch had ten points this week. Larry, who had a Historic low last week and has a historic high. I bounce back this week to get 17 points, but that's only good enough for third place. And Treve is in fucking dead last with 14, which in other years would not even be that bad of a score. No, but they're Just, start, some people are starting off hot. It's fucking strategy this year. I I literally <laughs> did. It was last week was a huge strategy game for me. I, I picked some teams that would have just been close matchups and switched the other way. So we wouldn't have as we only had seven star frames, we had eight the first week. I think this so, year I think this year because we're already showing it. We need to do something for the champion this year. Cause that's last year last year, the last couple years at least. Last I year does like, not count in our in our books. Yeah, it was a race like Reggie Bush's Heisman. But <laughs> <laughs> But um, I feel like it's been more for fun, but I feel like this year people are, well, at least all of us are taking strategies and picking games, mm-hmm. so we got to figure out what to do for the winner. I haven't been doing any strategy. No, oh, shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> week one, you was, was all strategy week one. Okay. <laughs> Going against the star frames. You went against the grain, like, in all the... Matches. Yeah, but I had circled those like right off the top of my head. I didn't mean to go against the grain. You were thinking. You're like, what are these boys going to think? You think I'm not on You think I'm not on the Okay, course. yes. Whatever you want me to think. <laughs> this, this, is the, this is the psychological tactics that we're using now. <laughs> yes. Alright, so we're on to NFL week number three. And speaking of strategy, I feel like this one's a decent one to split. Because the Tyrod Taylor curse, boys. This Texans quarterback's supposed to be the real deal just based off of that alone, Barnage. Tell us about the Tyrod Taylor curse. Tyrod Taylor, as much as I love the man, even if it's not his own fault, he is injury prone. He's going to get hurt. He ain't going to play a full season. I love the man. It shouldn't be like that, but it is. And, oh, the Texans are going to be so bad. I don't like the guy that came in. He wasn't that great against my defense, and my defense hasn't even been playing that great. So I, I'm taking I'm taking the Panthers. I have to. Taking the Panthers. And Cole, who do you got? 
Uh, I'm going to have to agree with Barnage. I'm going to take the Panthers as much as I hate to do. I hate, you know, Sam Darnold. But uh, Tyrod, I think, had to have been the main part of that offense, and I don't think it's going to materialize. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be good for them. You know, I'm usually kind of anti Thursday night football, but these, obviously, the week one game, Cowboys and Tampa Bay, that was a banger. And then the Giants and the football team, unexpected banger. I think this is going to be one of those games that's like an unexpected banger. Is every Thursday night game going to be a banger this year? Unex- yeah, that I think, would be awesome. I think they're all going to be bangers, like just starting off your week hot. I think this game is going to be kind of a banger. I think I don't even really know this guy's name off the top of my head. Davis Mills, number ten. He has two last names. Davis Mills. Yeah. <laughs> that's such a mad. That's a Madden auto-generated ass rookie name. That is yeah, these about. That, yeah, that is. <laughs> that's not his real name. He's a fucking spy, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he's a spy. Yeah, dude. He's just there to make up the numbers on the he's roster. He's, he had no. What the fuck are the Texans doing? I'm taking the Panthers, too. But, uh, yeah, I think it'll be a decent, exciting game. Should be, uh, I think, 31-34 final score. Larry, who you got? I'm taking the Panthers. Uh, I'm, CMC's coming back strong. Uh, I like how he's ran and how he's been playing for their team. I do still love the Robbie Anderson hookup, but I think it's going to be a different connection for Thursday night. I think Dan Arnold's going to finally get his <laughs> one. Go. He's going to get some touchdowns. I think it's going to be two touchdowns this week. That's the bold take. He's going to have two touchdowns, 75 yards. And the Panthers are going to win by multiple possessions. I don't think it'll be a close game. All right, ladies and gentlemen, for the third time this season, we open things up with a star frame. $5 charity of your choice. And, Larry, what does that bring the total to? 16 of them. 16 star frames here in week three. Coming up next, we got a AFC West battle between the Chargers and the Chiefs. Guys, I never thought I'd say this, but I think the Chiefs are going to start things off 1-2. and two. I think the Chargers' offense is probably the smoothest ran offense in the league. Justin Herbert makes throws that he shouldn't be able to make at such a young quarterback. And I thought he was going to be dog shit. So I will eat crow on that. And yeah, I'm just going to take I'm gonna take the Chargers to beat the Chiefs. It's going to be a high scoring matchup. 36-38. Chargers have to go for two to win. Cole, what you got? Uh, I like the Chiefs in this one. I do love Justin Herbert. Nice young quarterback. He's going to do great in the next however many years. But I just don't see the Chiefs losing this one. Barnhouse, who do you got? I feel like it's not obvious. I don't like the Chargers at all. <laughs> That's all. Let me know. reiterate. <laughs> but I, I don't like the Cowboys' defense. In ju- no, the I don't like the Cowboys' defense, and the Chargers barely did anything against the Cowboys' defense. And I think the Chiefs are a better team than the Cowboys. So I just I'm gonna take the Chiefs. Larry, who do you got? Andy Reid is not gonna lose two in a row. He's just too good of a coach. He won't do it. He can't do it. That division's too tough this year for them. And I think they're just gonna rally off another W. I, don't, I think it'll be decently close in the first half, but I think the Chiefs step away. And I think it's just gonna be because of the speedy receivers. I think McCole Hardman and Tyreek both have two touchdowns. Fair enough. So you're not using an upset on that? No. I'm just going to take it. Mm-hmm. Tell Cocky I'll be able to take that. I like, I like it. Alright, coming up next, we got the worst matchup on paper. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> Before I even dissect this, I'm going to go ahead. And I already... I already, I hate to, uh, I hate to steal the thunder because I freaking, I've seen it beforehand, but I, I was going to do it too. I'm going to lock the Cardinals in this one because there is literally, positively, 
Absolutely no fucking possible goddamn way the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to beat the Cardinals. Honestly, I think we were a better team last year than we are this year, and I don't even know how that's fucking possible. I'm going to tell you this. We have Andrew Wingard at safety, and he is the worst safety in the league, and that is worse than Zendejo, and that's on God. I have never seen a worse defensive player ever. I've never seen a worse Jags defense ever. We have Trevor Lawrence with the ball 60 goddamn times, and we lost two games by a fucking goddamn good amount to two teams that are dog shit. This is a team that is on a fucking tear. We might allow 63 points. It might be 63 to 10 final score. And is this in the desert? Or is this no, it's in Jacksonville. <laughs> Fuck, they're scoring 70 in Jacksonville. <laughs> we can't even win in front of our fucking home fans, dude. Yeah, no, not even fucking close. Cold, who you got? <laughs> For my lock of the week, I have the Cardinals. <laughs> I'm not shitting you. I did that way before I got here. That is my lock. I, I don't want to go in depth. I think you did that just fine, Tree. Gary, who do you got? <laughs> this is so bad. Oh, this is going to be like a lock star frame right here. Bro. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm taking the Cardinals with my lock. <laughs> Where? <laughs> Who do you got? Well, I'm locking the Cardinals <laughs> as because uh, Chandler's going to get five sacks, I think. I think he'll keep that ten sack frame because he's going to be all over Trevor's ass all day. He's got J.J. Watt to deal with, a, f- a former in-division foe. foe. <laughs> yep. And I just think D-Hop and all that offense is way too much for that defense to handle. So we're going to kill the Jags. All right, and I think that's the first ever lock. Star, Star frame. frame! Let's do $10 <laughs> to the charity of your choice! That's the first ever. I, is that the first? Yes. Yeah, that's the for first. For locks or... Yeah, the first lock star frame. Lock star frame. <laughs> Dude, I'm so used because like now I'm out covering games all the time, so like I just take notes on everything. So it's just like a fucking habit. Just like write that shit down. Coming up next, we got the Chicago Bears going up against the Cleveland Brownies. And uh Is Field starting in this game? Yes, he was announced today that he's So starting. okay, Barnage, look me in the eyes here. I have another hill that I've been willing to die on for a long time. You know what's funny is I think we're gonna have we're going hill for hill on this one. What do you mean? I think I'm gonna get the Sam Darnold one, and you're gonna get this one. The Fields one. Yeah, I, I, I don't. He's not going to be good because yeah. this team is not good for him right now, and they're for starting him. And Andy Dalton's hurt. I guess I don't know about that right now. Yeah, he tweaked his knee. Yeah, so it's just like, ugh, I don't like it. My defense is starting to come together a little bit. I don't like my defense fully, but it's like, you still got Miles Garrett there. That offensive line's not good. I'm, I've got to go with the Browns. The only thing that makes this hard for me is it is it sucks because if for some reason the Bears upset the Browns, I'm going to take the Browns, by the way, and fucking Fields wins, and the Jags get fucking smoked, by Arizona, and Trevor Lawrence throws two picks. You know, Dreeb's gonna be in my fucking messages. Being like, <laughs> fucking, what did I, what field's trash? He's gonna be all fucking in my ass. Cole, who do you got? I got the Browns. I think Barnage, I think I said it week one, Barnage has me sold on the Browns this year. So, I think Mac Attack still has, <clears throat> is he, he's, Playing right, oh, should be. Mac Tech, he'll have two and a half sacks, oh, but shit. <laughs> I still think the Browns win. Well, average. Well, Larry, who do you got? Uh, well, I think I'm going with the Browns. The Browns are the better team all around. Justin Fields looked really bad when he came in in replacement for freaking uh, for Andy Dalton. He came in, and I just think Andy Dalton, I mean, when he came in, he didn't look very good. Even They have some offensive pieces, but he 
I don't think Justin Fields can handle the workload to be the starting QB right now. I think the Browns kick their ass. I do. I think it's going to be a, just a blowout because the run game. I think Kareem and both Nick Chubb, 100 yards apiece. Both of them. Do you think Kareem has more rushing yards than Nick Chubb? No. Okay. All right, so I was going to make this the third. Star frame! $5 charity up. Your choice. Coming up next. Man, you know, I wish the NFL, like, this game is never going to draw because, like, it doesn't have any, like, big flashy names to it. But a game like Washington and Buffalo would be awesome to have on, like, Sunday night. Like, watching that shit on primetime. I think this is going to be a good game. I don't really... Split down the middle for me. I'm going to take... I'm going to take Washington to win this one. I feel like I've picked Washington every single week so far. Even with Ty- Taylor Heineke, I think he does. Actually, no, uh, you already did. Yeah, you I did. Went with I it. did. I will say, I won't go back on it, but I will say the Bills played really well against Miami, but fucking Miami was fucked regardless. I do. This two will win down. Yeah, I do like Heineke. I like Washington. I'll die on the hill that they're a good team, so... I'll take Washington. Cold should be out. I got Washington for my upset. Is that a reasonable upset? Uh, I think they're both like one and one, but yeah, but the Bills. Yeah, but the I mean, like they. I, don't I mean, know. the I Steelers. Think... Eh? Yeah. Well, Woo. yeah, then they beat the Dolphins. I, I mean, don't know. Yeah. Don't Barn, know. what do you think? I don't. You have to take a little bit into consideration from last year, right? Yeah, they're both playoff teams. Yeah, but the Bills... Okay, I'll pick it. Uh, I'll pick Washington. Not as my upset. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Barnhouse, who do you got? I got the Bills. I think they're a better team around. And I do love Washington. And I like Heineke. But I think this is going to be a tough one for them to win. And Larry, who do you got? I'm going for the Bills. It's they're going to be in Bills country. Bills mafia is going to be out in full force. Uh, I like Cole Beasley. I like Stefan Diggs. I think I think Josh Allen's just going to have a pass happy day. Uh, it's all going to matter if the pass rush gets to him, but I don't think it's going to. And I think it'll be close, but I think they win by a touchdown. The Bills. All right. Coming up next, we got a battle of AFC South opponents. And this is where I will use my upset of the week. I'm going to take the Indianapolis Colts to beat the Tennessee Titans. That's an 0 2 Colts team. Yeah, it is. Yep. That's, that's freaking a 0 2 Colts team with freaking Andrew. Did freaking Homeboy almost said Andrew Luck. Did Carson Wentz get benched? No, he's he hurt. Just get hurt. Yeah, yeah. always oh, hurt. He's got two sprained ankles. Yeah, so it's like, <laughs> well, I mean, nothing to play with. So I'm like, even if Wentz doesn't even play, Jacob Eason plays. It's an even bigger upset. Oh, I know. That's what I'm saying. That is an upset, but that's just, oh man, they're so bad. <laughs> that's why I was like, that's a bad upset. <laughs> you know, what not saying? gonna get it right. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Woo. I don't know. There's not a whole lot of upsets I see on the board. To be completely honest with you, I mean, the Chargers would have been a decent upset. But, I mean, fucking, it's like, when when can you call an upset an upset, really? Because, I mean, like, the Chargers and the Chiefs, that's, they're both one and one. I mean, you can't really call that an upset. Well, I mean, you technically can because the Chiefs or were playoff Super Bowl contender. and yeah. The you Chargers can't just take year. this season into consideration right now. I mean, all right. Because I mean, if it was, if you took it just for this season, one and one, you couldn't call an upset at anything. All. Yeah, you know. But I mean, like, if we're looking at it in terms of how like the Chargers and the Chiefs are like both playing, or like Washington and Buffalo, I mean, they're both playing at like similar levels. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Well, I mean, you still yeah, the yeah. Colts are at this point in the season. You still and, and then you last look season into consideration. Yeah. And then you look at like the remaining games. I mean, you got like 
the Saints and the Patriots. It's pretty down the middle. Falcons, Giants. I mean, there's not like a whole lot of yeah. upsets Makes on the sense. board. Mm-hmm. So, and the Colts are an upset, yeah. So I'm taking the Colts to beat the Titans. Colts, who do you got? I got the Titans. DH, DH, DH. 235 rushing yards, four rushing touchdowns, 12 receiving yards. Fair enough. Barnhouse, who do you got? Hey. <laughs> I love the Titans. It's going to be the Titans because DH is going to go off. Colts are dog doo doo. It's just. <sighs> it's not even fair. It's just Titans. Dude, I mean, the Colts kind of got dealt a bad hand. And, I mean, it's not like they're getting blown out every week. They're competitive. Well, last week was because of Carson Wentz. As soon as their backup came in, the guy threw a pick right to Jalen Ramsey. He, he, yeah. test, he like tested it, the worst person to test. And then it's just, I don't trust that guy. I, like, Carson Wentz did try to do everything to win the game against Aaron Donald, and that's why he got hurt. He got rolled up on by Aaron Donald, and he tried to throw a ball away, and it contorted his body the wrong way, fucked up his ankles. But that's what I'm saying, is he was throwing dots all over the field to Pittman and everybody else. That offense was good, but I just don't think anybody else can lead that offense like Wentz was leading it. Well, and that's a tough Rams defense. I think Jacob Eason's actually pretty solid. You, y'all don't know about the fucking U-Dub, motherfucker, dude? We'll see. We'll and motherfucker, see. dude, people in the sports card world are buying his cards, so I feel like he has to be something. I'm like, taking, dude, it's weird. <laughs> he's, got a, he's got an uptick in the market. He's going to go off. I'm taking the Titans, too, though. I think DH is going to go off. I think Tannehill will bounce back. The, uh, Julio just had 100 yards. They just started rolling with the offense. I think they're all going to start popping off. But Ryan I think Tannehill's my favorite quarterback. DH is obviously going to get like 150 because they're just going to feed him the ball and that Colts defense can't handle him. So, easy money. Coming up next, we've got the New Orleans Saints and the New England Patriots. The Patriots are the most boring team to watch in the league. They're so conservative. Mac Jones is just does what he needs to do. And they win ball games. And I think Jameis Winston's fun. But when he's bad, he's bad. This game's going to be in New England. I'm going to take the Patriots. Cold shooty gap. I got the Patriots as well. Don't like Jameis Winston. Like you said, in New, New England. I don't think it'll be like a landslide or anything like that. I think it'll be close, but it'll be like a 14-7 close. Right, that's what I'm saying. Mac Jones. Like, and not a fun close. My dad said, like, he almost fell asleep for the first time in his life watching a Patriots game. Watching a Patriots game. Like, Damn. watching Mac Jones. Because he just, like, does, like, the seven yard curl routes. It's like playing me in Madden 15. Oh, half back dive. Every, Every time. <laughs> yeah. Chew <laughs> clock, kick the field goal, <laughs> win the game. Barn, who do you got? I don't know why. I'm, I'm taking the Saints. I, I think they're going to have, like, a bounce-back week. Maybe. Who knows? I, it's a, kind of a wild guess at this point. And the Patriots' offense is boring, and I feel like the Saints' defense can predict that, which might help them in this game. So, we'll, we'll see. Larry, who do you got? I'm taking the Patriots. I think... Not only does Jameis Winston even out his interceptions, he's going to go one touchdown, four picks. Oh. And it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be 6 for 6 for on the year, just like he should be. And I think the Patriots are going to win 15 to 14. They're going to have five field goal drives and win by one point. Because it's just going to be an awful game. Because Mac Jones is just a game manager. He's not really a touchdown drive guy. No. And uh, the Saints are just going to be bad because Jameis is bad. And every time Jameis Aww. plays bad, they're going to ride that wave. So you're going to see one Alvin Kamara touchdown. That's why. Dude, I he's been playing kind of bad too. A little bit. Dude, he he's been doing dog shit. In the <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Saints offensive line hasn't been that great. 
Dude, have you fucking seen... Did you see how many points Dalton scored in fantasy this week? He got tripled. Dude. He got tripled in fantasy. He scored, he scored like, triple. He got tripled. Yeah, like 59 points. He got 52 yeah. <laughs> points, and his fan, the guy who played him got 161.3. Who played him? Uh, PJ. Shouts out to the PJ. fantasy. Big Pete's. Big Pete's. <laughs> yeah. PJ. It's, uh, Big PJ. <laughs> Big PJ's has some P- munch. <laughs> no, it's PJ. Took uh, it. Allie's. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Jam and sister's husband. Okay. <coughs> yeah. For Pete's. <laughs> For the Pete's. The Pete's of Parlor League. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Coming up next. <laughs> coming up next, we've got the Atlanta Falcons and the New York Giants. I think both teams might score fucking 40 in this game. The Giants suck, but they put up a lot of points. Daniel Jones is a top five fantasy QB. Yeah, fucking A. Weird. It's like Blake Bortles in 2014. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't make much sense. But, but I guess it works. Um, I'm going to take the Falcons. I'm going to say the Giants come so close. You know? <laughs> like, like so, <coughs> so close. But then, then they lose. Unfortunately, heartbreaker. Gold, you got? Yeah, I kind of like the way you think. Uh, I'm going to take the Falcons. Last year, every time I took the Falcons, they lost. Every time I didn't take them, they won. This year, I haven't gotten a Falcons game wrong, just so you guys know. Uh, I think it's going to be like the best game of the week, though. Right. I think so. And I think it'll be 21 23 Falcons. Just barely get it by. Barnhouse, who do you got? Uh, I got the Falcons. I don't like the Giants. I think they're crap. <laughs> Nanny Nichols is terrible. <laughs> Nanny Nichols. <laughs> I don't like him at all. I'm going Falcons. Trademark Nanny Nichols. Larry, who do you got? I seen a meme on Twitter, and it was a bunch of Spider Mans pointing at each other. And it was the New York Giants. They all had New York Giants helmets on. <laughs> and it was like, which season started 0-2? And, <laughs> and it was all the seasons <laughs> for like the past decade. So I just think this Giants team kind of sucks. Uh, the Falcons, <laughs> they're all right. They almost rallied back. Yeah, they did. Uh, they, I mean, they almost, got back. Mm-hmm. they almost got back from against freaking the Bucks, but they let them go just last second. I think the Falcons are going to win with the young Hoku kick, and it's going to be 51 yards out to win the game. Nail it. Nail it. Nail Nail in the coffin. 51. Right on the money. And the Falcons are going to give us a... Star Frame! $5 charity of your choice. It's the uh, updated tally, Larry. Let's see. We got 19 19 total. total. Four for the video. And one super lock star frame. I don't think we're gonna. I don't think we're gonna get any more of that. Do you think we'll ever get a super upset frame? No, there's no, no way. No, no. there's Never. no possible way we could ever mm-hmm. get that. Yeah. Coming up next, we got the Bengals and the Steelers. The Bengals, like Larry said earlier, didn't look too impressive. Um, I'm gonna take the Steelers. I don't have too much to say on it. Uh, Cole Judy got. I got the Steelers, and I don't think it's going to be a very exciting game. Don't know, like I said before, I don't know if Big Ben's going to start. T.J. Watt should be back, but he might not be, just to be safe. But won't be the game of the week. But I still have faith in my Steelers. I think it's going to be 14-0. Uh, to <laughs> Low-scoring affair, huh? Mm-hmm. All righty, Bart, who do you got? <clears throat> this is a division game early on. I don't think Mike Tomlin lets the Bengals win this. And the Bengals are young. They're making mistakes early on. And I think that's going to bite them this game. So I think I'm I'm taking the Steelers. Alrighty, and Larry, who do you got? I think the way Joe Burrow battled back after throwing those awful interceptions against the Bears showed me something that is going to make him get past the Steelers. I think they're going to try to ride Najee too much because Big Ben's pec injury, that's the one to his thrown shoulder. So I think the Bengals are going to sneak by. They still have a young, flashy offense. There's a lot of them to cover. 
I think the Bengals get them. And this is a strategy game, so might as well pick against you. <laughs> there we go. See, that's how you admit to strategy, Colge. I don't I'm just I don't, kidding. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up next, we got the Baltimore Ravens and the Detroit Lions. Um... Ravens are coming off hot. Detroit had a really good game against the Niners and then fell flat against Green Bay. They, they almost had the lead at halftime. Yeah, they almost fucking. And, you know, I didn't really even watch that game to be 100%. Well, what honest. happened basically was they had the lead and then down came Rain and Lambeau. And Jared Goff fumbled the snap and Jared Goff threw a pick. They were both ugly. And that was it. That was basically all she wrote. Green Bay capitalized on both of them, got touchdowns, and that was the end of the game. Poor guy. Larry, who do you got? I'm taking the Ravens. It's going to be, they're going to blow them out. The Ravens have been looking good. They they don't even need the old classy, like, Mark Andrews like they used to use. They've just been kind of using randoms. Tyson Williams, Latavius Murray, Hollywood oh, Brown. Yes. Hollywood Brown's looking good all of a sudden, too. The Ravens blow them out. Barney, do you got? I'm choosing the Lions with my upset of the week. Ooh. I think the Lions have been playing decent enough to win a game, and I don't. I, I, I want the Ravens to lose. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to take the Lions and hope this uh, comes out in my favor. Gold, do you got? I got the Ravens. I just don't see. I don't want the Ravens to win, obviously, like Barnes said, but I just don't see them losing against the Lions. After a game like they had against the Chiefs, I just I don't think there's any way. No, they're on. They're on the high part of the roller coaster at the moment. They're on one. They're on one, as someone would say. Fucking <laughs> on one. Coming up next, we got the New York Jets going up against the Denver. Broncos and the Broncos could not have had an easier cakewalk of a schedule. I mean, holy shit. They play, They played us, and then they played the Giants, and now they're playing the fucking Jets. <laughs> that is, That's um, the worst team in the NFL. That is, Ooh. that is the easiest three-week schedule, and we had a chance to put it on them. But no, the Broncos are going to be 3-0 and and lead the AFC West. And where <laughs> fucking who who the goddamn Back Raiders play? Who the Raiders play? No, the fucking or, uh, they lost last week. The Raiders yeah. are undefeated still. Who the Raiders play this? Week? The Dolphins. Yeah, they play the Dolphins, and they're gonna be. Oh, I want to be close. So, I mean, there that's a battle up top for the two people we thought were kind of at the basement of that fucking division. So that's just insane. But I'm taking the Broncos. Larry, who do you got? I'm taking the Broncos too. I was gonna do the Jets, but I just they're just there's nothing there. There's just nothing there. What what can you do? There's nothing there. I'm I'm taking the Broncos. Teddy two gloves, man. He's been looking Teddy good. Teddy bong water. Yeah, the bong, the bong water. He's the man. Uh, Tim Tim Patrick. He's been looking really good in place of Jerry Judy. Uh, I think their offense is young and looks good enough and. I just think they're going to win by a lot. The Jets are shitty. Barnes, who do you got with that Jets jersey on? <laughs> I don't got the Jets because <laughs> I think the Jets are dog shit. Dude, ah, oh, this. Sam Darnold wasn't bad. The Jets are bad. The Broncos are good. I think they're a. If they got a really good QB, they'd be an elite team. But I still love Teddy Two Gloves, and he's just going to dominate the Jets. So I'm taking the Broncos. Gold, you got? Oh, man. I love Teddy Two Gloves. But I was told earlier this video that Washington over the Bills was an upset. <laughs> because you guys suck. So if the Jets, the Jets are going to have one win this year. And hopefully it's against the Broncos because I'm picking the Jets for my upset of the week. I hope you can't tell me that's not an upset. Not an upset. <laughs> I will be going nuts if the Jets beat the Broncos. I will, yeah, same. <laughs> then I'll definitely be winning this league. I'll buy a case of beer if the Jets beat the Broncos. <laughs> be waiting for you on Wednesday. <laughs> okay. I don't know if I get my upset. Right? <laughs> <laughs> 
Coming up next, we got the Miami Dolphins going up against the Raiders. What is Tua's injury status, Larry? Is he out? Well, it's ribs. I haven't really looked up a lot on him because I don't really care for Tua. I don't either. That's why I have and, uh, I think Larry Rappaport. Jacoby, Jacoby Brissett, you know, he's kind of garbage. So, uh, <laughs> he looks so abnormal yeah. in the fucking Dolphins jersey. Yeah, he does. That number looks awful on him. Number 14. Yeah, like, the, ugh. yeah with that Sam Darnold jersey. <laughs> <laughs> fucking disgusting. That one looks great. <laughs> That one looks good <laughs> with the green. Yeah, that's a good one. But Tua or Jacoby, I don't give a fuck. I'm yeah. taking the Raiders right. by thirty. So, so who do you got, Larry? I'm taking the Raiders too because the Raiders are just different this year. Their vehicle, holy moly! He's, yeah. I think Darren Waller's going to have a hundred yard game. I think. I don't even care if Josh Jacobs plays. I, I don't think oh, it it'll matter. matter. Yeah, I think Hunter Renfro and Ruggs are just going to go off. This whole offense is stacked to the gills, and he's got great chemistry <laughs> with all of them. So the Raiders are going to beat him by a lot. I love it when you say sayings I've never heard before. <laughs> Bardown City. Uh... Uh, Dolphins are bad. Two is out. I'm taking the Raiders. Derek Carr has been killing it. It's as simple as that. Derek like, Vehicle? Yeah, yeah just... <laughs> Derek Vehicle. Nah, Dolphins are bad. Call Judy. I got DC and the Raiders by 30. <laughs> by 30? Alrighty, so then that's going to be another... Star Frame! $5 charity of your choice! <clears throat> got some bitches titties on the freaking pop-up window. NFL Streamio. <laughs> yeah. NFL Streamio. Coming up next, we got a... Com- this is going to be a good game. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Los Angeles Rams. Barnhouse, who you got? I'm taking the Bucks. I think the Rams could beat the Bucks. But the Bucks are better than the Rams, I feel like, right now. They're feeling, they're hot. Tom Brady's hot. And it's just, I really wanted to do a tie for this game, but I'm not going to because that's just not realistic for me. I'm going with the Bucks. Larry, who do you got? I'm taking the Rams. I think the Rams, they're both greatly coached, great teams. I think Stafford just hits different with this team. Cooper Cups look like on a complete new level. Like he's a top one. Like he might be the best receiver in the league right yeah, now. One of the best fantasy receivers. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's killing it. Cooper Cups really good. He's just, and this offense is just good, built around Stafford. I don't think it matters who's running behind him because they have a good enough offensive line <coughs> to make it happen. I think this will be like thirty eight, thirty five, but I think the Rams end up getting it done. All Judy I like. Los Angeles in this game. I think Stafford, he's going to throw the ball. He could throw it 50, 60 times in a game and just be fine. Oh, yeah. Easily. He'll probably have over 420 yards. He's a number one overall pick, baby. Yeah, absolutely. Gunslinger. He's and a Georgia. Gunslinger. You know, the boys from Georgia, they just do it different. He's a fucking bulldog. And that's why Oof. I'm choosing Los Angeles in this game. I'm going to go ahead and split things. I'm going to take Tampa Bay. This one was tough. But like Barnes said, I mean, they're, they're on a new level, man. Everybody's playing their best football. PKB is so fun to watch. He didn't really he didn't do as good as he did in week one last week. But, you know, I think with Jay, I'm, I'm curious to know where Jalen Ramsey is going to be on the field. Because he's going to have a lot of targets. There's going to be a lot of people out there, so, you know. I'd be curious to know where he goes. And I'm also surprised that's not a primetime game. Should have been. Yeah. Might end up getting flexed. Who knows? I mean, what if it did? Yeah, I'm not really a fan of the the primetime games this week. But coming up next, we got the Seattle Seahawks going up against the Minnesota Vikings. I also think this would be a pretty decent primetime game. This will be a decently offensive game. And... Yeah, as long as Adam Thielen gets the ball, my fantasy team will be happy, and I'll be happy, and I think the Vikings will be happy. I got the Vikings winning this one. Big bounce back week against the Seahawks. 
bets who you got? I'm taking the Vikings as my upset of the week. There you go. Because uh, the Vikings are 0-2, Seattle's 1-1, and uh, the Vikings have just had a tough leaf of the schedule. I think they're a really w- good team. They should have won most of the games they've been in this year. They've just had some bad luck. They have a great roster. Uh, even K.J. Osborne, the the third receiver on the roster, is getting ton, tons of reps, and he's looking great. I think Justin Jefferson, all th- three of those receivers are going to get a tutty. And I think this will be a close game, but I think Seattle's going to lose two in a row. And I, and I want to say, too, I was saying before the season started, Kirk Cousins was going to be a good fantasy QB. And he is. And he is a good fantasy yeah. QB. Barn, who do you got? I got the Vikings. Seattle couldn't contain DH last week, and I don't think they can contain Dalvin Cook. I think mean, he'll have a good week. And I always forget about him. Yeah. But he's yeah. just always the cake on the icing on the cake. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's like, what I, I, I just don't think Seattle's defense can handle that right now. So I'm taking the Vikings. Cold Judy, yeah. I like the Vikings in this one. I love Adam Thielen. He's top six court, or not quarterback, but uh, wide receiver in the league. The Vikings are due for a win, right? So, and I think they can do it against Seattle, and it's in it's in Minnesota, correct? And it's in Minnesota. I think they could do it in Minnesota. I don't think they could do it in Seattle, though. No. All right. Wow, that was that was weird good. and unlikely. Star frame five dollars charity of your choice. Star frame for the Vikings against the Seahawks. Well, unlikely. All right, as Colge lubricates his <clears throat> his throat, you know, he always tries to one-up himself. What Week one was, you know, a high bar, and I think week two he even, you know, came close to reaching that. We'll see what week three has to offer. <clears throat> Sunday night! <laughs> I thought that was pretty solid, Colge. I think I think I think out of all your Four weeks. Was <laughs> I think out of all your weeks. Last year I had a bad year. Cause last year I thought about my Sunday nights too hard. You thought about it. yeah. I think that one was a little. A little I thought, I'm not, I'm I not, thought about it. I think it was thought. a little stale, but <laughs> yeah. it'd be fair for the people to know. I thought about it too much. It it, it is two fifteen in the morning. <laughs> On like, a Wednesday. <laughs> on a Wednesday. We all got jobs. <laughs> I just got off work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. But I could do better. Yeah, no excuse. Yeah, no excuse. <laughs> but the Sunday night game is going to be the Green Bay Packers going up against the 49ers. Um, I got the Packers here. Hopefully Aaron Rodgers steps up. You know, well, not steps up here, but continues to play well. Um, Larry, who do you got? Uh, this is a tough one. I think the Niners need the wins for our division because it's going to be that tight of a race. But I think Green Bay sneaks one. I think Green Bay is going to beat them just barely. But I just like all all Green Bay's offense. Adams, Tanyan. They always they dial up tight end screen plays for Tanyan, which is extremely weird. And I like Aaron Jones, so I think the Packers will get it done. Barnard, who do you got? Packers came out hot this last week against the Lions. I think they're going to come out hot again. 49ers, I don't like the roster. The running back room is already injury bugged. Yeah. Yeah. Injury bugged again. And it's just like, I'm afraid that's going to start spreading to the wide receivers and QVs. Who knows? That's what happened last year. So I'm taking the Packers 100%. And Colts, what do you got? I like the Packers. Um, I like when I have to go last because you guys basically said everything. Yeah, I don't think the 49ers, maybe another running back gets hurt. Who knows? You know, it's going to be bad. The room's very limited. But the mm-hmm. Packers deliver a Sunday night. Star friend! $5 charity. Your choice. Coming up last, we got an NFC West showdown, and they just couldn't go. Two weeks without putting the goddamn Cowboys on prime time, could they? We we got the Philadelphia Eagles going up against the Dallas Cowboys, and I got the Cowboys by a million. I'm that sold on Dallas. 
I've always been kind of a closet. Well, not even closet, and I feel like I'm always kind of talking of Dallas. But, uh, yeah, not like everything Dallas has to offer. I actually just picked up Tony Pollard on the waiver wires in one of my leagues. Can't remember if it was in the... Funny that you picked up Cordell Patterson. I did pick up <laughs> Cordell. I savage. I put in a claim. <laughs> I put in a claim for Cordell, too. Same league. I stagged him. Yeah. Tough deal. I got him and Mike Davis. Yep. The Panthers deep. I'm so like, damn. <laughs> yeah, I usually get shafted in the waivers. <laughs> you got like all of them this week. All I put in like on three claims. Yeah, you got all of them. I put in four and only got like two. But yeah, I'm taking Dallas. Tony Pollard over 100. Let's start. Mark. Is he starting with his is he? Yeah. No, my fantasy started. Oh. Pardon me, I love Dallas right now. I, I'm, I don't like Ziggy, but I like, I like Dak Prescott a lot right now. He's been going off, and I think they're just better than the Eagles. I'm taking the Cowboys. Blair. Well, the Eagles do what they typically do. They come out hot one week and then are completely stale another. I see nothing from them last week. The Cowboys are a complete dominant team. They should be a 2 and 0 team right now. If they wouldn't face the Bucks in week 1, they would be a 2 and 0 team. So, I think the Cowboys are going to steamroll the Eagles. I think they're going to just be completely letting loose. All their starters are going to be going off. Dak's popping off, and he'll probably take the lead for passing yards by week 3. He'll be the week 3 leader. For this game, because so the, he's just going to go off. The crew is them boys at the I, moment. I think we are mm. them boys. I think we are the them crew boys. is them boys because I got the Cowboys <laughs> by 21. Let's go. And them boys are going to result in a star frame. Five dollar charity of your choice. <clears throat> Alrighty, Larry. What's the uh, total star star frame count for the video and overall? We got seven star frames this week. So it ties the same amount we had last week. Yep. And we had 22 on the season. 22 star frames through three weeks. I wonder how much we're going to have at the end of the year. I don't even know what a fair estimate would be. So we got, what, 22? Larry, seems you're a like math we, guy. It seems like we get about seven a week, so, you know... We're looking at like about ballpark 120, 18. 112. I guess 118. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> 60. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? We just hit a wall period. Yeah, we're just going <laughs> to not pick any together for, yeah. for the rest of the season. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to conclude our week three picks, locks, and upsets. Larry, got any final words for the people? Have a good week. We'll see you next time. Barnhouse, any last words? Adios, amigos. Colge? I love the Trebes tribe. I just hope you all have a good rest of your day. Me gusta nadar. We love to swim. For our non-Spanish speaking listeners. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for listening to this podcast. And you guys have a great rest of your day.